Okay, let's, uh, there were several exercises uh, um, at the end of last lecture, and uh, again, uh, th they were actually pretty uh, short, but I know this is, is new, so I, I will post the um, solutions to all of these. Um, I want to look uh, at the very last one, because uh, that's the most complicated one uh, of ones that were the most complicated of those that were assigned. Um, and then um, it, it has all the code for both the, the uh, well, all the server code. Um, it doesn't have the client code in it. But the problem was here to, to write a server now that can handle up to four simultaneous clients. And the way I did it is a little bit different than, than in the statement here. But uh, the, the basic idea is we're going to handle multiple clients by actually creating a new task uh, every time a client joins. Now, and, and this is used quite frequently on um, um, general purpose operating systems. But you know, with the NetBurner, there, we, I, th I think with MicroCOS, we're actually only limited to about uh, 12 or 16 tasks. So obviously, we can't continue to create tasks. So I put a limit here on it uh, that you could handle up to four simultaneous clients. Um, it's probably more than sufficient for you know a, a, an internet device, um, uh, you know, like like the NetBurner. So let's take a look at the the code. Uh, so here's the user main function. Um, again, I'm going to have four tasks here. Um, I have to set aside the the ta the stack space for the four tasks. Uh, so I don't provide the error checking in here. Just uh, keep the uh, keep the code a little uh, neater for us to look at. But here I uh, create the four tasks with the four different priorities, and then what I do is I use a a um, accounting semaphore to let me know uh, to let the the main task know um, if there is a if there is one of the uh, server tasks uh, available to handle a client. So um, uh, you'll see how that works here as we, we look at the main task code and then I go back to the server code. Notice that all four tasks also run the same uh, program, the same, the same code, the same routine, uh, the server code routine. Um, and then I use a queue to actually pass the client file descriptor from the main routine to the server routines. Okay, so that's a uh, you know, clean way to do it. A queue is ideal for that. And it only needs to be of length uh, four because I'll never have more than uh, you know, um, uh, four tasks to handle four, the four clients. So here's the rest of the main routine. It's pretty simple. Um, we first set up our, our uh, listening queue. I only have to do that once, so I don't do that inside my while loop and get a corresponding file descriptor. And then inside my while loop for my, my main routine, and I do all this in user main, is first I, I see this, I check to see if uh, 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 the counting semaphore is counted down to zero. If it has, that means all four um, uh, server routines are uh, in use. And then so I'll block here at this point at this OSM pend. But uh, it's initialized to four, so you know the first four times through the loop, this won't block. Okay, And then I accept the client um, and then uh, and, um, um, assign the, the, uh, that client file descriptor to this variable client uh, FD. And then I push that client FD variable on the queue. Um, all the server routines will pull client, uh, client IDs from, from this queue. So it's kind of a neat application because it uses a lot of the stuff that we've talked about for synchronization between multitask of multiple tasks. You know, using both the uh, uh, semaphores for um, to make uh, count resources and then uh, a message queue to pass data between tasks. And then okay, so let's look up at the server code. It's relatively simple as as well. 
um, uh, you know, I, I create a, a buffer here for each of on the stack. So all four instances of the server will have their own buffer. You don't want to use a global buffer for this that, that's shared bef between the four server tasks because they're all running simultaneously. And you know the, the data will get all jumbled if you try to do that. So um, in this while loop, uh, the first thing uh, the, the task does is is block uh, on the queue waiting for a file descriptor. So this this task will go to sleep until the main routine um, uh, has has a connected client and then uh, gets uh, gets that client file descriptor and puts that on the queue. And then the server task then reads that value off the queue. I, I give it the same variable name, but that can that can be anything. And then I, I enter in my read write while loop here, um, uh, serving that client. So, you know, and the, the protocol is that the client writes a string first. So my server routine here reads that string into, into the buffer. Um, um, the, the string is not a uh, properly terminated string, so I terminate it with a null byte here, uh, convert it to uppercase, and then write it back to the client. So we read and write using the same file descriptor. Um, the other thing is that when the client disconnects, on most operating systems, the, the read routine will return and return zero to indicate a client disconnection. NetBurner is a little different. If you read the documentation, you'll see this. The NetBurner actually returns a negative three when the client disconnects from the server. So uh, here I just check to see if, if n is less than zero. And if it is, I break out of the loop. I close the, the client file descriptor then here in the server routine. And then I increment the semaphore to let the, uh, to let the main routine know that there is another uh, server task. Um, uh, available here to handle the next client and then uh, we go back and and w uh, wait on the queue waiting for the next file descriptor from from the main routine so I, you know I kind of like this solution because I, I, I don't have to keep track of the different server routines by number you know that they uh, all, are all running identical code um, you know I, uh, they get the uh, you know, if I if I had to distinguish between them and pass uh, the the client file descriptor to each of them individually, you know, I'd have to set up I don't you know shared memory between them or you know individual queues. Uh, so this is I think a, a nice clean solution to that problem. Um, and that's it. It's relatively simple. So um, let, let's see how it works. Let me minimize this window. Okay. Um, I've, I've got the code running uh, on the NetBurner. The NetBurner's uh, assigned um, this IP 192.168.17.2. And um, so I can connect here from one client, um, enter. Of course, what makes this different now is that I can handle my server, can handle multiple clients simultaneously okay so I can go back and forth between these I can disconnect okay um, and then uh, reconnect okay do that multiple times um, I can have up to four clients here connected to the server uh, I'm not going to do that I could open up additional windows again that would probably be rare to have four simultaneous connections to you know to an embedded device like the the NetBurner but anyway I wanted to show you um, that uh, multiple client solution um, um, to this problem uh, I'll post this on the website um, under the uh, exercise from from the previous lecture and then I'll um, um, we're gonna look at in today's lecture another way to actually uh, handle multiple clients and that's using the select routine it doesn't require that you that you create multiple tasks it's probably a little more suitable for you know embedded uh, embedded devices 
where uh, we actually essentially poll all the different devi devices to see who is ready to we pull all the different file descriptors to see uh, if any client, any connected client is is uh, uh, ready to do communication. 